Welcome to the Sean Sean and Geek <laughs> the Sean Geek and Fast Fret podcast. Done. Well done. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> use that. Okay, so back to the topic board here. If it opens, uh oh, did I? I'm getting my new phone tomorrow. What kind of phone are you getting? Uh, Google Pixel. So right now you've got like an LG Seven or something. This is an LG Seven, yeah. So that's multiple generations old. LG doesn't even make phones anymore. Oh, so the Google Pixel that'll be yeah, that's got quite a few options on it. Yeah. So here's the thing. So. We're like, okay, well, this this phone, the battery's gone, so it's like I could buy a new battery for it, which is dumb, right? Battery's probably super expensive. This phone is very, very old. Right. So it's like time to get a new phone. So I'm looking at the options and stuff, and and then, um, you know, going through my phone company, right? Like just looking at my phone company to see what I can get. And right. I'm like, wow. Was your thing up? Like was your contract up? Uh, about four years ago. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're due for a new phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm due for a new phone, yeah. Four years ago at least. Right. Probably longer. This is, I'm four generations old, I think, maybe five. I don't know. It's an LG 7. They made an LG 8. And then they didn't put a phone out for a while, and then they said, we're not doing phones anymore. Hmm. This is very old. Okay. Very old. So anyway, so I'm looking at it, and it's like, okay, well, you know, for whatever it is, like $50 a month on top of your phone plan, you can get a new phone. And then it, it tells you how much the phone is worth. I'm like... On top of your phone. On top of your phone bill. So if your phone bill is $50 a month, you're paying an additional whatever it is, $20 a month, $30 a month, $40 a month. Monthly, you'd pay for the phone. I think you need to switch providers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we talked about this before. So anyway, so uh, okay. there, there, there's a, a good ending to oh, the okay. story. So, okay. so I'm like, well, this is kind of redonkulous. Like, or I have the option of a, of a cheaper monthly plan for the phone. Right. It's sort of like a rental plan. And at the end of two years, then you got to give your phone and get another one. So you're always locked in on a monthly plan to rent your phone sort of like when you're getting a car on a lease right. once the lease is done well you have the option of buying the car or you just go into another lease on another car so you're always paying rent for your car so it's the same thing for phones that's what phones phone companies are doing now so i'm like i'm not want to pay to rent my fucking phone like why don't i just buy it so it says so the phone i was looking at that's it, like your host phone if you have a house phone that you've rented through, say MTS, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah, yeah. they charge every month. Yeah, I had one sitting in my closet for three years. We never used it because yeah. we just bought one from the store. Yeah, exactly. Bought it out, yeah. and you use it as much as you want, and you yeah. had more options mm -hmm. on it. <laughs> so what I ended up doing, so I think the phone I was looking at, it said the phone was like eleven hundred dollars. You'd pay eleven hundred dollars for it when your term was up, your two years or whatever. But if you could rent it for less, right? It's so like, I'm like, like, that's fucking... It's like leasing a vehicle. Yeah, I'm like, that's fucking weird. So anyway, um, go on Amazon and like look up the same phone. It's $550. I can just buy it. But if I was renting it, it was like... By the time you were done paying for it, it was yeah, worth how much? Like double. <laughs> At least, yeah. So I'm like, you fuckers. I have to go to the washroom. Can you keep talking? Oh, sure. Okay, I'll bring it back. Yeah. Coffee. coffee. Hey, if you want more coffee, you nope. can grab some more. I'm good. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks, Shane, for popping on. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's funny because I, when I bought my phone, and we had a, podcast about it that one time and I think it was like a black friday sale uh because previously when i had gone they wanted to pay i had to pay for my phone um and then i had to pay for the plan and by the time it was all said and done it was like 80 90 100 dollars some ridiculous a month uh and then this last 
year when I had gone, I had gone to the, the the Black Friday sale. So I had got a phone, was it S22, I think, the Galaxy. And the plan, which unlimited internet, uh, long distance plan in Canada, within Canada. And it was, and I hardly use my phone to, to call anyone because everybody texts all the time. <laughs> And Facebook Live is even great because then you can just talk to someone face to face. But my plan was way cheaper. Like it was, I think the phone, I think it was like zero dollars for the phone and then you had to pay for the plan. So, I mean, things change all the time, but we only have uh, a couple of providers. I mean, the the big ones are, was it MTS and the other ones was it Shaw. So there's... Um, I think it was a Virgin Mobile was bought out by Bell or something or other MTS, which is another another thing altogether. But anyway, that's about the phone. But my phone is fairly new now, so I can wait. I think I've still got another year or so to go before I need to get another one, which is good. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, the cell phone bill is the most expensive bill at the end of the month. Actually, mine is, uh, I think it's like 60. 60 a month? Like yeah, because you're saying, oh, I didn't close the door. Sorry. Um, yeah, and you're, you're, are you renting your phone? No, I don't think so. That's I, I, I thought when I spoke to them, it was like, it, it's, like it's my phone. I, I bought it out and that was it. Like if I go to my emails, I'm sure I could find a thing for my phone. Of course, it's not telling. Oh, Shane's uh, conversing here. Bell. Bell Mobility. Oh, I love that when you look at. Oh yeah, my cell phone bill is my most expensive bill. Yeah, it's ever, it's stupid. Do you ever get that when you go to look at your emails, but it says no emails, but you know damn well they're there. No, it's probably just the view. If you've read it, it's not showing it. No, well, no, Maybe. I just I think if it's older than such and such, you have to set it. Set oh yeah, it it's only yeah yeah, which is crap because I've got a. Bell oh yeah, you're folder, you're using, but there's nothing in there. You're using the email. I use my Outlook, and I use my Gmail to look at my emails. But you're using email, which just looks at all. Yeah. But anyway, I'm getting the Pixel Seven A or whatever it is, which I I think I know. I looked. I don't want a Samsung because Samsung is built built in with every app imaginable running in the background that you, all you can do is lock them. You can't actually uninstall them off your phone. Right. Samsung's, which piss me off. Okay. So just, just to let you know, I got two phones. I've got an X, S22 and I've got an iPhone 13. Yeah. Like, whatever it is. And yeah, both new, bills for unlimited everything is $115 and 74 cents. For two phones. A month. Yeah. That, that's what I'm paying right now. And that was the Black Friday sale. I don't know if anything's happened since then. And then you own the phone. As far as I know, we own the phone. So you're probably paying. So I, you're probably paying something. I got like three, three different phones from from the past, like every three years. Mm -hmm. Like I keep my old phones, and I have them, and I can use them for whatever. Because my vision's I'm sure shitty. I could, I'm sure I could probably sell them. Shane, have you actually done a live stream? I'm curious. Yeah, uh, we're looking at other systems now. Let's see what he said. That time I worked for TELUS for a cup of coffee. I was the pixel dude. Wait a minute, you worked for TELUS? I didn't know that one. Oh, Hangouts. Oh, yeah, with the collector dorks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're looking at... I'm going to talk to Corey Morissette and... He, they do live streams like every single week. Right. Like this? 
Yeah, but on YouTube? I think he did. I think he started. I think he said he started with YouTube, but then he switched over to to whatever. I see. I already always forget the name. I knew he was on OBS for a while, and he's on a different one. Mm-hmm. Which for folks out there, we're, we'll test it. And we'll let you know the results. But it sounds like for the same price as Zoom, like the Zoom monthly fee, right, is roughly equivalent to this other one. Well, I should look it up and see what it's called, since I'm already looking <coughs> but um it's the same price as zoom but it also allows you to stream to four platforms at the same time so instead of going to each platform and going putting the links in it does it automatically that's part yeah of i think you have you just click it in and then you pay a monthly fee for the service which is nice uh let's see who did he say he's using Streamyard. keep forgetting Streamyard. oh Apparently it used to be clunky and apparently they've done a lot of upkeep to get it better. So Sweet. I'm going to try it out and see if I like it. Is there anything else on the board we wanted to really talk about? Oh yes, actually. Okay. Do we want to talk about the Steve Vai thing or do we want to talk about the LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn you... scam? Scam? Yeah. Oh. The LinkedIn scam? That that might be, that's a big topic. I think the Steve Vai thing is probably pretty quicker. Okay. Or, or did you hear that Jason Becker, you know, who Jason Becker is, yeah. you know, Eddie paid a visit to him before. Yeah. I actually saw the video. You yeah. saw the video. Yeah. yeah. Paid a visit, gave him one of his, uh, Wolfgang guitars. Right. Like the, one of the ones that he designed. Right. Cause after a while, then they just go to the factory and then they're just like, but these are one, like ones that he worked with the, the designer and they kind of did everything. He got one of the first, whatever it was, hundred, got it signed and wow. everything in that visit. Like you saw the visit he did. Right. Well, he's selling it now. Okay. So because he has ALS, yeah. Lou Gehrig's disease, right? Right. And it's costs him a hundred grand a year for all the stuff. So that doesn't mean eating and stuff like that. That's just all like the medical expenses for having ALS yeah. apparently is a hundred grand a year. Well, he's in the US too, like so it's not Yeah, so there's no health care. There's no health care at all. Jason Becker, you know what? If you could move to Canada, like honestly, yeah, I don't know. That sucks. So has he has he actually sold it yet? Well, he put it up, and he was saying, you know, it. He was sad to let it go. Right. However, he can't play it. Right. So he would like for someone to buy it. Right. That would play it and enjoy it. Not someone who's going to put it up on a wall, but someone who's actually going to someone who loves Eddie, right. loves guitar and has some and, money and, and well, has some money. Yeah, right. Exactly. So then, you so know, everyone, they can, everybody wins. Yeah. Like yeah. he doesn't want just, you know, some, some rich billionaire who's going to buy it and then auction it off to make money. Like he wants to sell it to someone who wants, who wants the guitar, right. not wants to sell the guitar, but wants the guitar, right. Which is awesome. Like, I always feel like the, with the buy and sell and all those places that. Well, you couldn't do that. Like if it's a local person, like it'll be like, you're, you're, you're so pigeonholed in one section. That, that's like when I sold dad's 57 Chevy, it was like, if, oh, if yeah. you limit yourself to Winnipeg, there's yeah. only so many people who are going to be interested in it. And we're like discount capital of Canada. Yeah. And nobody wants to pay full price for anything, anything in Winnipeg. No. So you had to kind of branch out throughout all of Canada and the U S just, you know, to have someone, you know, give you a fair price for it. So I'm assuming that he's gone to say eBay or, or one of those places. Probably. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, I didn't follow up on this, but you know, it would be really cool to see What's that? that someone gives them whatever, gives them money for the guitar. Say a million bucks. We'll just, we'll just pull a name. We'll just pull, yeah, a, number. pull a number. So they give them a million dollars. Right. And they say, keep the guitar. Well, there is that too. Now he's not asking for handouts. He's actually, look, I'm going to sell something that I have. He's not saying, Hey, please give me money. I have ALS. It costs me a lot. Like he's not asking for a handout. Right. He's just saying, Oh, I'll sell something I have that has value. Right. So basically I'm going to find a way to create revenue myself. He's not saying I need support in that way. Like, please give me money, but it'd be nice if somebody just gave him money. Yeah. I was listening to his album, the one he composed. Right. Because he just composed it. Right. Right. He composed it and someone else played it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Who pl- actually played it? All his, all his, oh, not all his one buddies. Person. This no, multiple, but yeah, like, I think songs. Vi is on there, Steve Lukather, oh, okay. like a whole bunch of like big name people. But the first song I listened to, it's just, it's orchestra. It's all orchestra. And it's actually really, it's really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to look that up. See if you can find it. Yeah, no, it's it's on YouTube. You can oh, okay. look it up on YouTube. But you got to make sure you grab the right one because he's he's released a lot of po- posthumous posthumous. You can say that when someone releases an album after they've passed away, like Prince, he re- he recorded a song a, a new song every single day. So he's got stuff in the vault. So if they release an album now, they call it a posthumous release. Oh, so he's he re- released several. Okay, after he couldn't play anymore. Right. So it's, it's, it's hard to pick. You have to know which album you're looking for. So, right. but he had one. So there's some like, so when he composes, it goes through a software and then he picks the instrument to play these notes. So that'll be strings. This will be horns. This will be, so he's picking the instrument. So he's using virtual instruments right. to play the notes that he selected. Right. So that stuff he's done on his own, but on some tracks, a guitar player will come in and they'll take the sheet music and play. Right. Right. So it's so a combination of both. But it's, I feel like I should go buy the album, probably from his website. That wouldn't be a To bad support idea. him. Yeah, for sure. Like I can stream it all I want, but I mean, if he's going to make 37 cents off my streams. Right. Like what's the fucking point? Yeah. Right. I'd rather just give him cash. Well, whatever. Yeah, uh, an actual album version, you're getting more money than streams anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think there was a big thing on, was it Netflix or someone was talking about streaming? Like, where's my money? Like, oh, you're sp- streaming all my stuff nowadays, and yeah, and it was basically the same thing we talked about. Yeah, it was like you're getting point zero 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 one penny per play, and it's like, okay, who's making all the money here? Obviously, the artist is getting screwed over big time yeah big time more yeah. so probably than back in the day when when the music industry was taking well advantage. well because one of the things that that kind of came up with this whole streaming thing was the music industry itself was saying you are killing us right remember when lar lars ulrich was complaining about um, napster and there was yep. a whole lawsuit and all that sort of stuff limewire and, and he was saying you can't do this you're ripping us off Right. You know, but in, at the time, the way it played out in the media was there was a very anti Metallica thing going on at the moment going, you guys are so fucking greedy yeah. that we can't listen to your album for free. Like that's how people took it. Right. Cause that back then everybody was, music was always free. Right. People were downloading it from everywhere, blah, blah, blah. And then, but their argument now in hindsight, their argument was, look, I'm not as concerned about myself and our band, I'm concerned about the music industry. And by the music industry, I actually mean the artists who actually write and play and record the music. I'm concerned about those people getting fucked over. That was his argument, but people heard it as, uh, you know, I can't buy another Porsche. I can't buy another mansion. I can't buy, but he was defending the music. He was defending the the artists, not the music industry, but the artists, but people took it as you're defending the music industry. So the interest, so, the music industry was flipping about this. You're taking our money. The music industry was saying this, not the artists. Right. I mean, some artists were, but the music industry was already, was screwing over artists. They've always screwed over artists. They didn't want the competition either. Just like the government. They don't, they didn't want the competition. Right. (laughs) So they came up with, you know, they, they brokered. So I don't know if there was a, I I recommend watching the Spotify uh, documentary. There's it's like a Spotify documentary on, on Netflix. Yeah. It's, oh, Netflix. it's, it's a recreation of events and every episode is from a different person's perspective at Spotify. Okay. Or a different person, maybe not from Spotify, but you had the, the, the guy who created the algorithm, whatever. And then you had the, the financier and then you had the, the person they brought in for marketing and they all told their version of the same story. Right. But it was all different versions of how Spotify overtook the market and that sort of stuff. And what's very apparent as, I mean, the record labels were not doing good. Right. Right. When the streaming came out, but eventually all the record companies 
and Spotify and iTunes Music and whatever, they all they all had meetings and they found a way for it to be profitable for both sides. Okay. But not the artist still. Well, so, yeah, they weren't part of the meeting. No, no. So <laughs> they're basically the artist is still getting screwed, but now the record companies are making money again. Right. So they're still, so it's just, the artist is still getting screwed. So, which brings me to the Steve Vai article I read. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to bring up the highlights of this. Uh, I, I, I think Steve Vai is awesome. He's a good guitar player. Yeah. But he's also a good dude. I think so. Both so him and Joe. Yeah. Sad, yeah. But I know some people are like, oh, they're shredders. I don't like shredding. No, no, there's, they're way more than shredders. Yeah. So, so he was, he was, so this is from guitar.com. So credit to, to, to guitar, to guitar.com. They interviewed him and he said, Steve, I says, has spoken about his decision to bypass record labels by starting his own, a move he now describes as kind of outrageous looking back. So to paraphrase, his, his first solo album he put out was Flexible, right? Yeah. Yep. And when he did that one, um, oh, what did he said here? Uh, when, he, when he did the record and decided to put it out, he had no, he wasn't trying to sell the record. He's like, I've got song ideas. I want to put them out to the world. Right. That's all he wanted to do. Right. Which is what we did with Bros Before Gin, right? Yep. And Dome, like we just... I want people to hear it. Right. That's the concern. Right. We're going to make a bunch of money off it? Of course not. That's not the way the industry's built. Right. So he said, I just didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to go to labels and say, would you play, would you release my record? Please release my record. He didn't want to do the whole back and forth of trying to find an agent and a manager and a label and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He said, I just want to put the fucking thing out. I don't give a shit about all the other stuff. I yeah. just want to put the fucking record out. I just want to play. Which is what we did. Uh, so he said, I didn't want to be subjected to anybody else's decision about anything. I just felt in a position of vulnerability if I have to depend on a record company. I had no desperation to be famous or successful. Just wanted to play the guitar and record these cr great crazy melodies and songs the idea of writing music, recording it, and listening to it, that was what I was looking for. That was enough. Um, so he was given a deal, and he turned it down because it wasn't right, quote unquote. It wasn't right. When I read the deal, it was like a $10,000 $10, advance. They would own the record, and they would give me 25 cents a record. And I had to recoup the 10000 advance from my 25 cents. <laughs> and I'm like, what? This is what? They saw me come in, some stupid kid. I took it to my attorney and he, he said- He actually read the contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he said, I took it to my attorney and he said, no, Steve, this is a conventional record deal. And this is a, this is a good one. They're offering you an advance. Most people in your position, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't offer an advance to. Yeah, yeah but, but you're getting money back. Like what's the yeah. difference? I said, Steve, Steve said, yeah, but then they own my record. Yeah, because that's what they do. And I said, fuck that. No, because I didn't feel right. It didn't feel right to me. Why should they get so much more? There's always been another kind of stumbling block for me. And it was always at an economic level. I could never understand why anybody would get paid more than me for my work. And they never have, not in my career. I've always made sure that managers, agents, anybody, I get paid the most. The end. Right. For his stuff. Yeah. Now, when he went to David Lee Roth and played with them, I'm, I'm wondering how well, they that brokered was, that deal. Yeah, that wasn't... That was probably something different. But for, but for his own stuff, he was getting full credit. Yeah. So here's so, so here's what he... So we, he, he said, fuck that, I'm not taking the deal. Right. And he, what he ended up doing, I did something kind of outrageous. I decided to bypass... I decided to start my own label as a 22-year-old 22, 22 because I just started to look behind the curtain. And I'm saying, well, how do labels work? The only thing we had to go buy back then was like the Yellow Pages. There was no internet. There was no computers, nothing. But we figured it out. I noticed that labels have a great function. They pay for everything. They give you the money to make the records, and then they take the record, and, they, and then it becomes part of their equity, right. not yours. 
because labels run great risks and that's how they build their equity by owning the masters. Then what they do is they sell, they manufacture the records and these were all vinyl back then in some cassettes. They manufacture the records and then they sell the records to a distributor. The, di the distributor puts it in the stores, blah, 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 blah. So why don't I go to distributors instead of the labels? There you go. Why don't I go direct? And I did. Um, but not having a label meant every distributor I would call, they say, no, we don't take product directly from artists. Well, then you find one that does or create your own. So he says, no, he said, it's, it's another revenue stream for them. So he said, okay, so you won't take it from me, but you'll take it from a label, right? Okay. I got so, my own label. <laughs> so I paid $12 and 50 cents right. and started a label. I filed the papers, right. I, I went downtown, filed the papers, and now I have a label. And then I went back to the distributors and they were willing to release it because it was a record label. Perfect. And he called it important records. So they, <laughs> so he offered me $4 and 10 cents a record and I retained the rights to the record. Nobody was taking it. Nobody was willing. He, so. Uh, so he took a thousand, so he took a thousand and that was a lot of money for me Four thousand. So he made, wait, so what did he say? He offered me four, four dollars and 10 cents a record. And I retained the rights to the record. Nobody was taking it. He took a thousand and that was a lot of money to me, $4,000. Then he took another thousand, then he, then another thousand, then all of a sudden, Guitar player was guitar player magazine was talking about it. And then, right. So basically every time he was going to print the album, right. It cost him money, but he made $4 and 10 cents back on every album sold. Right. But he had to pay to press it. Right. Well, I mean, but, but then he made $4 and 10 cents each. So over and above. Right. So impressive. if it was, I don't know, he didn't say how much the record was, but if it's $10 a record, say, yeah. and he's making $4 and 10, right. Well, he was going to be making 25 cents a record. If he went through someone else's label, having a manager, having them blah, do blah, blah, all blah. Work, yeah. 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 So that was the difference. So from 25 cents a record to $4 and 10 cents a record. Right. That's big, dramatically different. Big difference. Yeah. So that's what he did. Okay. So let's, let's step back here for a second. This was back in what, what year was this? Eighties, late seventies, eighties. I can't remember when flexible. Well, came. this is pre eat him and smile. So it'd be early eighties. Cause eat him and smile wasn't it like 85, 86. Uh, it was there about 85, okay. 86. So this is going to be early eighties. Okay. Well, we'll say pre-internet. Oh yeah, okay. definitely pre-internet. Okay. So pre-internet, this is how things were done. You, the record label, if they wanted to sign you, you sign the dotted line. If you had a manager, they would take a cut. The mm -hmm. record company would take a cut. You would get so many pennies on the So on they're the probably dollar. getting 25 cents a record just spread out between himself, right? his agent, and his manager. Right. So now so what he did was he researched it and circumvented all of that and mm -hmm. went and did it on his own. Yeah. Now- Today, how would that work today? If you said, question. you decided that I'm not going to go through the record company, I'm not going to go through Spotify or any of these other places that won't pay me squat, how would you actually get your, your music out? So instead of actually going to a person who's doing the pressing, you would actually go to someone who's doing it digitally, um, masters, I would assume to be able to release. Now, whether they release them or you release them yourself, you would need to know what the procedure is that the record company would normally go through from taking your record and actually having it for sale. What is the process? Can well, you also uh, bypass everything else that the record company is doing and doing it on your own? Okay, so when I put our songs up on GoDaddy, not GoDaddy. Um, <laughs> SoundCloud? No. No? Um... um Whoever I went, I can't remember who it is now. CD Baby, GoDaddy, CD Baby, okay. sound same. So I went through there and there's all these forms to fill out, which basically say, and in the end, you own nothing. We will pay you. So basically, so so he, this is how it works. The streaming companies right. pay out a certain percentage. 
Right. Right. So point zero 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 one cent. Now, do they own your music, or you still own your music, but they're getting the bulk of the money, and you're getting? I'll get there. So, so that's how the streaming services work. But they won't deal directly with the artist, unless you create your own label, which is what we should have done. (laughs) Yeah, we should create our own label for twelve. Well, he said he paid twelve fifty. I wonder how much it is now. Well, it wouldn't matter. I mean, you you can start your own business as long as you have. But we can do it through. Cancom or whatever, Canadian content. We right. can create an account there. Right. Register ourselves as, um, I think, publishers or whatever they call it. Right. So basically, or, um, so when you figure out copyright and stuff of your song, right. there's the people that, are, that write the songs get, a pers- get paid something, and then the publisher gets paid something. Right. So if we make ourselves our own publisher... And then the publisher pays out the writers, right. you and I. So when we release more, when we put Bros Before Gin on major streaming, we'll create a CanCom account mm-hmm. for each of us. Right. But then we'll create our own label. And the label will be submitting the songs because the label will own the publishing rights. Right. So there is a way of doing it. There's a way of doing it, yeah. I looked into it a bit, but... Ideally, that's what we do. So that way you get publishing rights and you get writing, the writing side. Right. So then the way it works is when your songs are out there, then we would collect publishing. Right. And then as a publisher, theoretically, I think we can go directly to the streaming services. And how does that work? They say, well, okay, you have an album out. We're going to give you... X amount of dollars per plays or, or whatever well, see, it is. See what, so work? when I, we, I tried to add our music directly to Spotify, for example, mm-hmm. you have to be, you have to be, you have to go through a service. Yeah. Right. Is what pay they say. them to play your music. Yeah. But then they get a, they get a commission too. So there's another level to the streaming. So not only is Spotify and those companies not paying right. properly, right. But the, CD Baby and uh, all those other ones, they're also, they're, they work a deal directly with Spotify to cut you out of it too. I'm sure Billy Joel doesn't go through GoDaddy no. or uh, CD Baby or whatever to, no, his label goes directly to the streaming service and puts the music on there. When Neil Young got all pissed off at Joe Rogan and said, I don't want any of my music on Spotify. And he pulled all his music. And Joni Mitchell pulled all her music off Spotify because right. of the shady shit they pull. Right. Then that's the label doing it. That's not uh, CD Baby. Hey, a CD Baby, I'm Neil Young. Pull my music. No. The label's going directly to Spotify and tell him, pull my fucking shit. Right. Right. Shane's been saying a lot of things here in the interim. Let's, <laughs> okay, let's. You yeah. read it because I can't. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, mo- boat to upgrade. Mine is a stupid amount. Uh, oh yeah, you say I am so thankful being Canadian. It's too bad Lars didn't come out and say help these people instead of don't steal my music. Yeah, exactly. He's not a good. Uh, uh, he's not the uh, excellence of elocution. Right. Uh, Oh, okay. So he's he's uh, he's gone. Well, he's still here. He's still here. Well, oh, he right stayed he had taking a shower. He's probably still leaving it streaming. So oh, okay. So yeah. So I mean, we should try that, man. Yeah, if there's a way of doing it, sure. I'll look into it. It's like one of like a hundred things <laughs> I'm planning on doing. Yeah. We'll get the live stream thing happening too, and then maybe I don't know what you, how you people feel, but we'll figure out some sort of. I don't want to limit who can see us on streaming. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's an option like Patreon. Oh, you got to be a Patreon to watch us streaming. I don't know if I really want to do that. Nah. I think I'd rather have the streaming open, but we'll offer extra advantages to being on Patreon. Like you, you'll, uh, I don't know. We'll figure something out, but I, yeah. I kind of want to keep like, I'd even if we get one person in the chat, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Anyway, I guess. Uh, right well, you want to cut it here? Yeah, I think we cut it here. Yeah. And All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yep. 
And where can you find us? You'll find us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to probably insert something there, I think. You'll find us. Yeah. Uh, you can find us all social media at Sean Geek Podcast. The website is seanmcginnity.ca. That's S E A N M C G I N I T Y dot C A dot C A because it's Canada. That's right. And, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Sam, for the uh, incorrect headlines. Yes, we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Hey, gang, Sean Geek here. And Fast Fret. And we have two storefronts. If you are a T Public fan, you can browse our inventory over at T Public, which is tpublic.com forward slash Sean Geek Podcast. Or redbubble.com slash people slash Sean Geek Podcast. You can get anything from either storefront from t shirts, stickers, phone cases accessories of all kinds we're talking masks notebooks mugs pillows totes tapestries oh my oh my <laughs> everything's there <laughs> just go to those addresses also check the show notes and help support the show thank you goodbye bye